I'm Dr. Rachel Dolan, a movement disorder specialist and vice president of medical communications at the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research. Today I'll be discussing drug repurposing in Parkinson's disease. Repurposing, or sometimes referred to as repositioning, is taking an existing FDA-approved drug that is used for one condition and using it to treat another disease. Because drug development for a new compound can take over a decade and over a billion dollars, this can be a way to potentially speed drug development and reduce costs. In a disease like Parkinson's, where patients need better symptomatic therapies and a disease-modifying therapy to slow or stop progression, this can be a really attractive strategy. When we're looking at repurposing therapies in Parkinson's, they can typically skip the first phase of clinical trial testing. And this is because FDA-approved therapies have already gone through extensive clinical testing to be proven safe for use in people. But since they haven't been specifically tested in people with Parkinson's, they do still have to undergo phase two and three clinical trials so that their safety, tolerability, and efficacy can be tested specifically in people with Parkinson's. You may wonder how researchers decide which drugs to test for repurposing from among the thousands of drugs that are currently available. And it can even seem a bit random. Drugs that treat high blood pressure, cancer, diabetes, even an over-the-counter supplement that works as an antioxidant are currently in clinical trials to test for a potential benefit for Parkinson's disease. Clues for repurposing can come about in a couple of ways. Doctors might notice a pattern in small groups of their patients who are taking certain medications. Researchers can study large populations of people both with and without Parkinson's to see if some of them are diagnosed with Parkinson's at lower rates. And investigators who are studying the basic biology of Parkinson's might notice that these mechanisms overlap with those of other diseases. A lot of people when they hear about therapies and testing for repurposing want to take them right away. But waiting until a drug's safety and efficacy is fully evaluated ensures that you have all the right information. Trials for repurposing are important for a number of reasons. First, Parkinson's changes the underlying chemistry and biology in a person. People with Parkinson's could have different responses and side effects to a medication that is FDA approved for another condition. Secondly, Parkinson's affects a generally older population of people. The average age of diagnosis is around 60, so that can bring other medical conditions and other medications that need to be considered. And finally, Parkinson's is a lifelong condition, so medications need to be considered safe and tolerable for extended periods of time. Some people will still choose to take a therapy before testing is complete, and this is what's known as off-label use. Off-label use generally describes an unapproved use of an approved medication. If you're considering taking a therapy off-label, you'll want to, of course, have a thorough discussion with your provider. A few things you'll want to discuss include the potential risks, benefits, and side effects of the repurposed therapy, as well as off-label use of medication in general your medical conditions, as well as any medications or supplements you're taking and potential drug interactions, the cost of the medication, as well as if health insurance will cover it, the scientific evidence to date and how strongly, if at all, that supports off-label use of the medication, and finally, any ongoing research and whether clinical trial participation is an option for you. As with any therapy, you'll need to weigh the potential risks against the potential benefits. Only your provider can give you an informed opinion on the potential implications for your personal health and care. If you do decide to proceed with a therapy and testing for repurposing, you'll need regular follow-up and monitoring for potential side effects. You can learn more about this topic in our Foundation's Guide to Drug Repurposing and on our website.